When you think of fashion, you probably think of outfits like this, or this, or this. But you might not think of outfits like this, or this, or this. Today, I'll be talking about avant-garde and artisanal fashion. Avant-garde fashion stems from the avant-garde art movement, which is primarily based on creating radical, unorthodox, or experimental work. Avant-garde is a French term which literally means advanced guard or vanguard. The term implies forward thinking and progressive work. And that's exactly what we find in the garments of avant-garde designers. Work that is pushing the boundaries of conventional taste. Avant-garde fashion is tricky to box into a specific category, but for the purpose of this video, I'll mostly be talking about the types of designs pushed forward by designers like Yoji Yamamoto, Rick Owens, and Ray Kawakubo of Comme des Garçons. So what does avant-garde fashion communicate? All of the following would be valid terms to describe avant-garde fashion. Bold, minimal, dark, edgy, unique, elegant, futuristic, and extreme. In many ways, avant-garde fashion is about the rejection of mainstream fashion and its breakneck pace in favor of something slower and more thoughtful. As you know, the market in the world became like a fast, 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 cheap, 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 sexy, sexy, sexy. This is very far from me. When you have designers producing garments like this, you might think they can only cater to a small group of dedicated fans and while that may have been true in the 80s or 90s, it's not anymore. Avant-garde fashion is present in a lot of mainstream culture now, actually. One of the primary examples being hip-hop music, where these kinds of dark, experimental outfits appear in a number of recent music videos from artists like Kanye West, Rihanna, and ASAP Rocky. In fact, ASAP Rocky is a known fan of Rick Owens and similar designers. As he says in his song, Peso. Rap Simmons, Rick Owens, usually what I'm dressed in. Avant-garde designer Yoji Yamamoto has also recently broken into the mainstream with his Y3 line in collaboration with Adidas. Yamamoto's goal with the Y3 line was to bring more elegance back to casual style and streetwear, which he felt was becoming ugly. The street fashion became so dirty. It wasn't fashion for me at all. It looked, it, looked, it looked ugly. In his autobiography, Yoji Yamamoto says, Black is modest and arrogant at the same time. Black is lazy and easy, but mysterious. And I think that sums up one of the key aspects of avant-garde clothing. It's paradoxical and offers a unique dissonance in the image it creates. It's both elegant and chaotic, ascetic and luxurious, bold and timid. It creates a nice juxtaposition, and that's what makes it so interesting. It's easy to think that avant-garde fashion is bland or boring, especially due to the lack of color in most avant-garde collections. But this is actually one of the ways avant-garde fashion is able to stand out. Because of the self-imposed color restrictions, avant-garde designers are forced to innovate in other ways like shape, volume, texture, and silhouette, leading to some beautiful and intricate creations. Reduction yields innovation. It's the same in jazz music, where musicians improvise around a melodic structure. The soloists are constrained by the chords that the band members agree upon, but free to improvise and create something new each time they play. In this way, restriction provides a framework to innovate upon and makes the creations that much more impressive. In order to really appreciate avant-garde fashion, you have to set color aside and focus on those other aspects. You see, with fashion, we often expect clothes to be perfectly symmetrical. So when we see an outfit that artfully breaks that rule, we're immediately drawn to it. Our brain expects symmetry, but we get something else. This is one of the ways avant-garde outfits can pull you in. 
Traditionally, runway designers focus on getting a silhouette of the human body underneath their clothes. The garments should skim the body and show its shape, but avant-garde rejects that idea as well. Instead of body silhouette, we get clothing silhouette. We all know what the human body looks like, so traditional clothing can become visually boring. Avant-garde designers aren't limited by the shape of the body. They're free to imagine their own shapes and volumes. This lack of symmetry and invention of shape and volume gives the impression of a shadow. It's mysterious and draws us in. It gives us just enough visual information to let our imaginations run wild. Despite its experimental and often futuristic look, you can see a lot of references to traditional fashion in the works of avant-garde designers. A key example is the drapery and wrapping you see in Yoji Yamamoto's designs that echo traditional Japanese clothing. Even if you're not interested in adopting a full avant-garde look, if you're trying to improve your own fashion, I would encourage you to try experimenting with muted palettes, focusing on blacks, whites, and grays. See what you can create with just these colors. Be creative. Of course, in order to really adopt the avant-garde image, you'll probably want to buy clothes from celebrated designers in this niche. And that brings me to one of the major barriers to entry of avant-garde fashion, the cost. Or rather, our perception of the cost. For example, a single piece of clothing from Yoji Yamamoto's collections can easily cost over 1,000 US dollars. And a pair of new Y3 shoes is often over 500. The interesting thing is that when I say that, many people watching this video will think those prices are high. And they are. But that's only because our price anchors are set so low thanks to fast fashion brands like Zara and H&M. We're so used to prices that are incredibly low, and we balk at the prices that these artisanal designers are asking for, even when those prices are relatively fair. At the end of the day, only you know what you can or cannot afford, but I wish more people would treat their wardrobe as an art collection rather than a batch of cheap and disposable clothing. I'm not encouraging people to buy name brands because of the name alone, but it is important to support fashion designers because you like the work they do and believe in the values of the designs. Eugene Rabkin, creator of the avant-garde fashion magazine and forum Style Zeitgeist, said this far more elegantly than I could. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. I'm not talking about the poor, but there are millions of people who can but don't just because there is always H&M. Affordability is partially a mental construct. I'm sure absolutely everyone here knows people who will drop $100 going out in one night, but would never for the life of them buy a $100 shirt. And they don't bother asking why they pay for a $4 cup of coffee every day, often twice a day, but consider a $100 shirt unaffordable. That being said, there have recently been a lot of new designers creating avant-garde pieces at more mid-range price points, so I'll list a few of them here. Julia Seven, First Aid to the Injured, Artifact, Andrea Yakov, Army of Me, Masahiko Barayama, Incarnation, Isamu Katayama, Tom Krom. I want to once again encourage people to support these designers if you can afford it. They're catering to a small niche and doing great work in the fashion industry. It's also possible to find used pieces of avant-garde designers on sites like eBay or Yahoo Japan if you can't afford to buy the pieces new. So consider stepping into the shadows. You might like it there.